A local nonprofit's vision is for individuals they serve to achieve an overall outcome of God's peace, life purpose, and fulfillment of potential. Coming up on Pole Place, we will hear their story and what you can do to help them during this holiday season. Make sure you stick around. Welcome to Polk Place. I'm Brian Lacey and joining me in studio is Steve Turbyville. He is the president and CEO of Lighthouse Ministries. Welcome to the show. Good to be with you, Brian. Yeah. Well, let's, for the folks that may or may not know, let's give a little bit of a rundown as to what Lighthouse Ministries is. So Lighthouse Ministries is a gospel rescue mission that provides a life learning campus for men, women, and children for residential um, uh, so that they might have a, a place for residence and that they might have a place for spiritual growth, uh, developing relationships, and then uh, being provided an opportunity of education and uh, employment. And we go through uh, a process with them that's a program that lasts seven months for the uh, spiritual and education component and community component. And then uh, we roll that over into employment. Uh, and so we have an average stay of about 18 months and then they move into permanent uh, housing. Let's kind of break it down a little bit more from the rescue mission side, mm -hmm. bringing them in to help them. Mm -hmm. Talk to me a little bit about that and some of the things that they go through. So when we, we were established in uh, 1977 to house and help men and women, uh, men uh, on the streets as they came in and it was a, what many would call a soup kitchen at the time. It was soup, soap, and salvation. And we would provide uh, chapel services, meals, and shower, and a bed for the night. That uh, grew into a program that provided all these other components, uh, the uh, education and the employment side of things so that we have uh, in 1986, we moved from the storefront on Kentucky Avenue and Bay Street to the uh, location on West Magnolia that we have the Men's Rescue Mission and the Recovery Program. On, across the street in 2001, in December, we moved into the Women and Children's Facility and that provided the same kind of programming for men, uh, for women and children also a preschool and the adult learning center. Um, out of the rescue mission side is individuals come through because of emergency needs. They come because they have no other place to stay. And we give them uh, three free nights a, a month and then we charge $7 a night. The reason we charge $7 a night, we want to encourage them to move into the recovery program where there's no charge or uh, help them get a job and uh, be able to afford some housing for themselves and then graduate from the housing that we provide to other housing in the community. With the events of 2020 and COVID, have you noticed that your services are more in need. Talk to me a little bit about how that's affected your mission. There, there are several ways that the services are more in need because of the COVID. In the community, there were jobs loss, as people know and understand and have felt. And those that were on the brink anyway lost their homes. They lost their housing. And so there was a need for shelter. And those with addictions were at a, a very vulnerable place where people had given up on them and uh, probably rightly so in some ways, but 
they still needed that hand up to get back uh, on track. So what happened to us is we had to, we, had, we stopped our chapel services and held them outside and we had to put beds in the chapel area to accommodate more, more folks coming into the rescue mission. Then the other part of it was the uh, women and children's program. We went to capacity there and we went to capacity on our recovery program for men because the needs were great emotionally, physically, um, financially and all those, all those areas. One of the things that you said, a hand up, and part of that hand up is the education. Let's mm -hmm. go a little bit more in depth mm -hmm. as to some of the things that that, that brings mm -hmm. to those that that are in need. Okay, so the so as we assess individuals, we find out what uh, education uh, through testing that they've had and what they uh, are able to. Uh, parlay into a job and that sort of thing. And when we started working in this population, we found out that there needed to be more accommodation for GED uh, high, and high school diploma because what happens is, is the, the trauma in people's lives, they get to a place where they can't learn. And um, it's not really that they can't learn, it's that their mind is telling them they can't learn. And so we have to accommodate in, in the program to give them confidence that they can learn and it's, it's in small bites. So that takes, that takes a little, little time. The other thing is a treat, I mean, to, to get testing and to get accommodations through a psychologist, you have to pay like a $1,200 fee. So what we've, been able to do is partner with other gospel continuum of care individuals that have uh, the, the other ex the backgrounds like psychologists mm -hmm. and others to come alongside of us and do those accommodations at no charge or at a, a lower fee. Mm -hmm. Then as we move them through the adult learning program and they, they graduate through that, they get they get certifications in areas that they, uh, some of them may even have their high school diploma, some have college degrees, but we, we affirm that they're, they're back on track and then that's when we provide the employment phase. As with a lot of nonprofits, helping those in need, um, seems like the holidays are a time that you need the most from from the community that you serve. Talk to me a little bit about how folks at home can help you during the holidays. So the needs that we are uh, dealing with in this holiday season is typically feeding and toys for children and uh, accessing the neighborhoods for to reach people that wouldn't normally ask for help. So it's not like we can plan and budget how many dollars that is. So what we need from the community is we need either uh, kind of a minute man mentality that hey, if we call on you, we need you, we need you, your financial help, we need your prayers, we need your volunteer help, and it's more of a, like a minute man mentality because we don't know uh, in emergency care what that, that's going to look like. Holidays bring a, about a lot of different uh, emotions and things of that sort. There's a lot of things that kind of manifest themselves in a home where there's a lot of tension already and maybe financial, maybe um, maybe there's domestic violence, maybe, maybe there's anger issues. And so we have to be kind of on point on those needs. While the basic needs are, are there and they, they have to be met, those are our gateways to help people with the, the needs that are going to either grow them or they're going to make decisions that's going to destroy them. 
one of the things that you guys do yearly is a is a Christmas Eve feast. Let's talk a little mm -hmm. bit about that and and what's available and, and, and who can come and, and how folks can help out with that. Okay, so the feedings, uh, Thanksgiving and, and Christmas we do, uh, like Christmas coming up, we have uh, the feeding that takes place at 4.30 on Christmas Eve and then 5.30 on Christmas Eve and then 4.30 on Christmas Day and 5.30 on Christmas Day. So we have, we have need for volunteers uh, for the, for, to serve at the tables and to prepare the meals. Uh, we have needs in regard to just people being uh, there to uh, socialize and fellowship with the individuals. Um, and then we have our food box distribution. And the food box distribution on meals this Thanksgiving, I think we did 36,000 meals through food box distribution. Uh, and we look like we're going to run into uh, probably maybe 24,000 meals Christmas or more with just the food box. Uh, We've got about 30 seconds mm -hmm. left, Steve. What I want you to do is inspire folks that may be watching to, uh, to get involved, to help those that need it the most, and to help you, Lighthouse Ministries. Well, thank you, and thank you for allowing me to be here. I just want to encourage everyone to know that when you give in any way at the Lighthouse Ministries, you get back much more than you could ever give. And, and really try to do it in a way you can have a relationship with somebody that you're helping. And we would like to make that opportunity valuable for you. Thank you. Steve, thank you for coming in and visiting us, and, and come back and see us again soon, please. Appreciate it, Brian. Thank you. Lighthouse Ministry services include residential programs, feedings and sheltering the homeless, and outreach centers within their thrift stores to assist low-income and at-risk families in West Central Florida. The mission serves their homeless guests 365 days a year. The gospel rescue mission is for homeless and at-risk men as overnight guests. Their life learning program is a residential men and women's program and is a comprehensive values-based approach, provides direction, encouragement, and accountability for residents as they live their lives under the leadership of Jesus Christ seeking to recover from their addictions, destructive lifestyles, and homelessness. Interested in partnering with Lighthouse Ministries to serve the poor and risk and population of West Central Florida? There are numerous ways you can be involved, including their Christmas Eve meal and their Christmas meal. Yeah, they're located at 117 East Magnolia Street in Lakeland. Now, if you need more information on any other programs or volunteering for them or helping them out financially, give them a call, 863-687-4076 or look them up on the web at www.lighthousemen.org.